Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I'm glad you could join us. Uh, today, we're going to actually present an application case study on the calibration of a large complex system. And I've brought along with me uh, a great presenter coming to us from uh, what about uh, 30, 45 minutes from Lyon. Uh, Arno, how are everything? How are you doing, sir? Hey, hi, Scott. Hi, everyone. Um, hello to all the to all of you present here on the on these webinars. I'm very happy to have uh, you all with me today. Excellent. And what are you presenting exactly? This is a case study on what? OK, so um, today we're going to go through a case study of uh, a Congress uh, Convention Center called that Centre de Congrès in French, uh, which is located in, in Angers. And uh, we did the calibration end of January, as far as I remember. I uh, hope the guests from the venue are with us today. Maybe they're on the chat. Maybe they can say some word. Um, so uh, we're going to go through the whole process we can uh, we can uh, do with our uh, ecosystem right now. So you've been through webinars on uh, last week on, on Sun Vision. That was great. Uh, you've been following some webinars on uh, on M1 from the since the beginning of the week. And uh, now we try to merge all this stuff uh, into the ecosystem and uh, see how it's powerful to go uh, to go to from beginning to the end. Excellent. Um, and with us as well today, I think Alex, you're going to help out and uh, remind people of a few of the different steps and processes along the way and how to use M1 to its fullest potential, correct? Yeah, exactly. You're right, Scott. Thank you. And uh, I hope everyone will enjoy that. Excellent. Um, so, uh, Alex, you're coming to us. You are just outside of Paris, correct? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, just an uh, application design engineer in the loudspeaker system and uh, M1 uh, product owner. Oh, no. Excellent. Uh, so today we have a, a, a team of moderators to help answer your questions in the chat. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one important person. Martin, Martin Rode coming to us from Berlin is going to join us as well in this conversation about system calibration. Martin, how are things in Berlin? Berlin is fine as always and um, I'm happy to with you joining the seminar and to support Arno today. Thank you. Great. Um, and joining us as moderators today, let's go first to Denver. Jesse, how are things in Denver today? We are good over here. Thank you, Scott. And hi, everybody. Uh, I think you're all well. Hope everyone's staying safe. Um, Jesse's going to help out in the questions and answer as well as JC. Uh, JC, you're going to give a help uh, answering questions in uh, English, French, German. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Are you doing uh, uh, Russian as Sergey? So you've got Spanish covered as well, don't you? Yes. Uh, bonjour à tous. Effectivement, moi, je vais essayer de, de, <coughs> de répondre à un maximum de vos questions. Uh, alors, uh, dans un maximum de langues, on va faire ce qu'on peut. Euh, du moins, bienvenue à tous et euh, n'hésitez pas oui, à poser vos questions dans votre, dans votre langue euh, euh, préférée ou c'est le plus simple pour vous. On va essayer de répondre à tout ça. Bonne journée, bon webinaire à tous. Fantastic. Uh, Sergey, how are you doing today? It's been, I feel like it's been at least uh, 23 hours since I've seen you. <laughs> uh, hello everyone, I'm, I'm all fine. I'm right, still fine in London. Thanks everyone for joining tonight. Um, feel free to post your questions in the Q&A tab. Привет всем. Рад еще раз участвовать в этом деле. Можете задавать вопросы на русском, если есть такое желание. Thank you very much, Sergey and Arno. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you. I think you have a bit of an introduction of this particular project. Um, I will let you uh, get started. Yeah, sure. Um, so this project is a is a is a real one. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure you have many questions about it. You you you've been asking a lot on the chat, and and please continue doing that. It's it's great. Uh, but this one will will bring some some more questions. I, I I'm pretty sure. Uh, so this venue uh, we are going to talk about today is a, a real venue. It looks like it looks like that. So it's a real venue with real constraints. Okay, and uh, also with real choices during a calibration is is uh, also choosing some some aspect and we'll go through that and also some some real mistakes you you will see that we can go through uh, through real mistakes in real life 
Uh, first of all, I, I would like to show you some something I've been uh, seeing in the chats when when we go to M1 and Network Manager and even in SunVision. Sometimes you 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 feel that the the windows are are too small and you can't you can't fit everything into it. So there is just um, uh, a small trick with your OS. If you go to the to the parameters uh, of your display and you can see there, I've got my first screen where I have my uh, my uh, all, all, all this stuff and this second screen I, I'm sharing with you. Um, if you go here, so sorry it's in French, but you, you will find your your way through the the English or Russian or whatever language it is. Uh, here, this setting is quite important because changing this will change the aspect of your Windows within uh, within your OS, within uh, Network Manager, and within SunVision. So for for the question of the windows are too small, I can't see anything. Uh, please uh, have a look at this uh, at this setup. You can you can find the same one on a on a Mac computer. Um, so let's go back to uh, this venue. So this venue is a, is a, a convention center, brand new, uh, equipped with a Cara I system installation series uh, with SB18i flown behind the Cara. And you can't see that on, on this picture, but there is also a complementary system with Siva Sivalo for the infills and a front field with 5XT. So let me show you some more pictures. You can see here the nice integration from Melpomen, French integration company that did the job on this one. And the last picture of uh, the Congress Center. So let's go directly to uh, the Sun Vision file so you can see better what's into it. So what I like in Sun Vision is having this nice display, having the catwalks and all the stuff. But maybe for today it will be tricky to see something with that. So I'm pretty sure you know this uh, option, but maybe not. You can go here to your catwalks, for example, and I want to keep them. I, I, I like to, to see where I am in the venue. So I will just add transparency to it with that parameter, how far you can see there. OK, so I will do the same with the panels here that are annoying to see everything. And that's cool. Now I can have a clear view of everything. And you can see the system as you saw it on the on the pictures. You can see the Siva Sivalo as an infill and you can see the 5XT here for the first uh, rows. OK, so uh, I'll start to show you the design by show you, showing you what the Siva is doing, because uh, starting from what the Siva is doing will be a uh, will be very important for deciding what we want the CARA to do. So the SIVA is covering this whole area, almost all the first rows, complemented with the 5XT here. OK, but if I go for a mapping of that, then you will see that it's covering a very large part of the audience. So then at this point, we can uh, go and uh, see what. So uh, let me let me add the front fill so you can see how it's covered all over the first rows. So what I need for my Cara, which is my main system, which will be the the most uh, important uh, element we focus on today, even we, if we look at everything after. Uh, my Cara needs to cover all this area, and maybe I want the Cara to go up to there, down to there, precisely. OK, so then you, you've been, because that, get out of the mapping mode and have a closer look to my Cara. So you've been through um, all those webinars about auto splay, auto FIRs, all this stuff. And uh, we want to do that with the Cara. So I will go back to my source code view system. And you see there, I'm not able to do much because uh, my system is not seeing any audience in front of it. So what's very important with autosplay and auto FIRs with all the auto tools, you need an audience in front of you. I like having this uh, cut into the audience so I can, uh, it reflects well the venue, but for this topic, I will need another audience, which is full. Okay, so I can see an audience in front of my camera. Let me unmute it. Let's uh, imagine I, I start from nothing. I will set my 
site angle. Okay. So my D max would be at the end of the venue. It's around, I don't know if you can see the numbers. It's around 30 meters. So as a rule of, of, of uh, some, I, I try to take 20%, about 20% of the uh, of the Dmax as a Demin. So for, for my Demin, I will look at six meters. And six meters will correspond to uh, what my SIVA is doing there. So I should have a minimum spatial crossover between the CARA and the SIVA, each covering its own zone, and the spatial, uh, the spatial crossover will be easier to align. I can click on the Init button, so my autosplay is doing a first uh, first coverage of the of the of this area. And what I like to do is, so it's already done there, but you can have a look at what's happening in the low frequencies of your system. So um, showing it in your SPL target, you can see that the camera is uh, its, its behavior in the low frequencies. This is this blue line there. It's quite constant at the beginning, and then it starts uh, decreasing. So what I want is my eyes to follow the uh, behavior of my lows. So I will take the same kind of, tar of target here as my low frequencies. Same for the Dmax, but I told you it's a convention center, so minus six dB at the, at the back of the audience is maybe too high. I want more intelligibility at the end. So maybe I will go for minus three, and this should be okay because I can expect some some buildup of the low frequencies at the end of the venue. So this will be pretty fine in reality. Uh, then I can optimize that. Okay, and I could go for an auto FIR. So I'm going quickly over over all that. If you if you don't understand what I'm saying, maybe go go back to the webinars of uh, last week. So I've got LFRX as, a, as an amplifier with two box per M channel. Click auto FIR, and here it is. So uh, first of all, what I should have done here is. Uh, I could not do before autosplay because this is Cara I and I need to send something to the integrator that will not be able to change uh, during the calibration process. But auto FIR, I can do it again after. And what I've not done here is look at my condition, temperature, and hygrometry, because this will change the behavior of the of the algorithm of auto FIR. So in reality, my temperature is not 20 and 60% of hygrometry. Uh, in this in this particular venue, it was 23 degrees and it was 43% of hygrometry. So I'll come back to that and click auto FIR again. Sound Vision tells me that the condition have changed. Of course, that's what I've been asking him. So I will do it again. And now I've got the real condition, real atmospheric conditions, uh, ready to go for uh, the on-site calibration. Um, so at this point, I'm ready to go to uh, to network manager. So I will click to to save this project with my auto FIR settings, and uh, I can go to my network manager. So this is network network manager. You can see here version 3.1.1.2 so you will soon have this version okay so uh, let's move on and try to load my session so this is this one so you you see i'm not loading a network manager session i'm loading the sun vision file and here it goes i've got my cara system i've got many stuffs and um, at this point, all I want you uh, to keep is those four groups. Sorry, I go for it. I want to keep those four zoning groups. Okay, uh, for all the rest of the stuff, I might delete it. Well, don't do that. I delete this. I can delete this. 
But I can't delete this one. If I delete this one, then they will not be synchronized anymore with Sun Vision. So that's very important that I keep this one as they are. I can rename it, but I can't delete it and recreate it. Um, OK, so I'm ready for uh, reorganizing my session. I could add my hands, my custom presets. OK, this is not the purpose of today, so I've prepared it in advance. So I will go to my uh, basic session with not much more than what's on site. So I've got this LFRX amps. I've got their IP address. I've got the preset. So you got those amps for the Cara left, right. A custom preset with SB18 cardioid and 5XTs and one amp for Siva Lo Siva. OK, so this is uh, this is uh, completely standard. And by the way, you can see that I'm completely offline there. And all what we are going to do today uh, will be completely offline, meaning that all the M1 process, network manager process we are going to go through together is completely offline, meaning that I could do that uh, in my hotel room, in the train, in the plane. Uh, I don't need to be in the venue to do that. Of course, I will need to be in the venue to confirm that all I'm doing uh, by listening to it is uh, is uh, is correct. Um, so at this point, the only thing I have is those four zoning groups. OK, you can see it's coming from Sun Vision. I, can, I, I could change something in my Sun Vision. Uh, let me show you that. I could decide that my objective is not good anymore. Run the FIR again. Save my session. And go back to my network manager. And just click not on the load, because if I click load, I will uh, get my uh, my session from, from the start. But on synchronized zoning groups. At this point, uh, go for uh, this zoning groups and update them with the new uh, version of it. Um, Scott, is there any question uh, at this point from uh, from the chat maybe? No, I think actually uh, so far we're doing well. The guys have done a great job answering this one and there's a few questions that have come in that I think we're going to get to if I looked at our notes. So I, I think we can wait on that. Um, so you've gotten set up ahead of time and I, I like the part that you said you could probably do this even from your house or your bedroom because that's exactly where you're doing this from right now. <laughs> yeah, um, that's exactly what it is. And you could also, of course, um, uh, this would be true of, of any project. We can do a lot of this work in advance before we get to the venue and be fully established in our objectives and our goals for our calibration and our tuning, um, which for me is always a, a benefit to see uh, as you get further and further down the process. So it's, it's great. So I think you're, uh, you're what, about to get on site and start, start checking to see if uh, everything's working. Okay, cool. So first of all, what I want to do is uh, before I uh, I start, uh, what's the, the calibration process is already started. What I'm doing there is already part of the calibration. But before I start the tuning process, meaning trying to have some delays, some EQ, some stuff like that, I, I need to check my system. Is my is my system functional or is it uh, completely uh, uh, crushed? So you first have to check your mechanics. OK, did the integrator do a great job? Is my car at the right side angle? The entire element uh, uh, angles are, are correct. Uh, the positions are correct. Is my sieve at the good spot? It has to be there. It, it must not be somewhere uh, completely on the side. It has to be there. And once everything is done, then you can go and check for your load checker. So this is the first thing you would, you would do. And as I'm offline now, I can uh, go to my load checker. You have to be in setup page to do that. I have to look, can go to my load checker. And I can uh, load a file, which I did on site, which is this one. And I can check on every amp whether the, the load on the channel output is correct or not. And here it's my CARA system. I've got two lows, two lows, uh, sorry, two lows, two high, two lows, two high. Correct for this one. This one, same thing, I'm correct. So the black 
line is the real measurement of the load of the impedance at the output of the channel and the green area is uh, uh, the expected result so the tolerance and it says i have two boxes per channel same on this one for the subs i'm correct also one box per channel three five xt's uh, on each channel same for this amp and SIVA SIVA low is uh, correct also. And you see, even if uh, SIVA is a, is, a, is a passive enclosure, I can still have information on my lows and highs. So that's a very powerful tool. So you can start your tuning, tuning process knowing that every enclosure it's, is powered by the right presets and that all the enclosures are, are, are cabled. Maybe not correctly, maybe there is still a, a reverse polarity, but still it's there. So now I want to check all the functionality of my system. Uh, so there are many ways to do that. I will show you mine. Uh, I will go to a more advanced uh, step of my uh, session, which is uh, the system verification. Of course, I've got a preset version warning. It's already another uh, version of presets since January. And in this step, I will, I have had added uh, a location. So you've seen with with Scott and Alex in the in the past days, how you can add a location. So it's this box here. I can add one. I would have it here. Erase this one. And this location is with my Mac right in the center of the venue. Okay, somewhere. If I go back to my SunVision file. Somewhere, okay, somewhere right there. Okay, right in the middle. It's quite important to be precise, precisely in the middle of the venue. So this verification point is a place where I will ask M1 to measure the four zoning groups on the left side, the four zoning groups on the right side, the two channel sets I have for the subs, left and right, SIVA left, SIVA right. When I say SIVA, of course, I say SIVA plus SIVA low, and the 5XT also. So at this point, I have this verifi verification uh, location, which can be done by M1. So let's move to M1. M1 is there. I can resize it. Thanks to my OS uh, display trick, I've got a nice large window. And you see, I've got this uh recording tab with all the groups i asked and what is very cool with m1 compared to an external software is that to measure that i just have to click arm and start record and that's all i have to do and then m1 is in charge of muting and muting all the stuff so that's very cool um this is already done so alex will show you uh, again uh, how we record all this stuff in a few minutes but i want to go to my eq tab and have a look at what's uh, happening with these measurements. So I can have a look at many stuff. So for example, my first zoning group, left, here it is. And maybe I want to compare it to my first zoning group on the right. And cool, it's corresponding. So there is no uh, difference between those two. I can do the same thing on the CARA 2. Okay, I guess you see the point of that. Same thing, quite good aspect of that. And this is uh, uh, maybe I'm not right in the middle. OK, so I could uh, display all my stuff at the same on the same graph. Let's have a look at that. OK, so as a reminder, my first box is displaying the, the measurement at this location. This would add the measurement to the average and this would display the summation let's complete that okay cool so you see here my whole uh, system is quite well uh, installed i can also have a look at the summation of all this stuff so for example if i have a look at let me show you a little more Okay, so my summation between my first learning group and my second is good. I can move on to my third one. Summation is good. 
can move on to the fourth one. Summation is good, etc., etc. I can uh, therefore look at what's on left, what's on right. If all my components are uh, uh, with a good polarity, and move on with that. I can do the same thing with subs. Okay, my summation is good. If I had a, a, a reverse polarity on, on, on the cable of one subs, I would have a, a drastic uh, decrease of the energy. This is not the case here, hopefully. And I can, I can even have a look, even if I'm far from that, to the SIVA. Okay, SIVA left and right are pretty good, and the polarity of them is pretty nice also. Okay, so that's the way I'm, I'm looking at uh, the functionality of my system to be sure I can start uh, doing my bunch of measurements all, all, uh, all the way from the stage to the back of the venue and not losing time doing measurements that will be useless because my system is not cabled correctly. Okay, I can even show you the 5XT, even if I'm far from the from the from those small speakers, I can still have some great infos just with only one verification locations. Okay, so that's a cool, uh, uh, a cool aspect of M1 being, being able to do quickly uh, measurements for a ver verification process. Uh, but maybe that, that's not the only way to do it. Scott, maybe, uh, maybe you could uh, react, or Martin, you can react uh, on how you would do this, uh, this functionality check. Can hear you, uh, Scott? Sorry, missed a pickup. That's uh, one more and I'm fired, I guess, for the show. <laughs> You're the uh, specialist. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a little tougher when you don't have all the faders in front of you. Um, no, I do something very similar. And on larger systems, uh, I end up having to have maybe two or three central points just to make sure I get a, a, a good quality data on everything. But I, I very much do the same thing. Um, I also sometimes go through like channel by channel with mute and noise. I think, Martin, you do something similar to that as well. Yes, yes. I'm a little bit old school. Um, I'm, I'm mostly using noise and listening to it, and you can easily do that if you are listening in the LF range to the summation. So if you're if we're talking about a line source like Kara, I would switch on the single uh, eight-inch driver channels and then listening to the summation. And uh, in the HF range, you will easily hear if there's a polarity inverted within the line source array. So this is you can you can listen uh, to the array if it's possible to bring it down by a close distance, or you make a walk through and you will definitely hear it. Uh, if you never experienced it, I can recommend flip the polarity in one. FIR channel and you will definitely hear what's going on. Um, what I'm also doing is um, that I'm doing a measurement um, on the on the center axis like Arno did and I'm measuring the left PA and the right PA and I'm uh, observing the impulse response and see if the first maximum uh, flips to the positive side or to the negative side. So the impulse responses should be should be equal. Yeah, and the other thing I think I also do when I set up my layout for my measurement locations, I usually have several points that end up in the middle, especially in larger systems. If we're talking about a festival with 12 or 16 a side enclosure, somewhere in, in the middle of the venue, uh, the front third, middle third, back third, there's probably a mic that I can end up with equidistant from left and right, and I just like to see both systems behaving similarly. Of course, remember, if you're outside, uh, the high end is going to be challenging to see that perfectly, but it's always a good indicator. Something sounds strange. If something looks strange, something's probably strange, um, and you should start to investigate deeper. So that's kind of my, my rule of thumb. Back to you, Arno. Yeah, my turn for the mic. Uh, OK, so now we are ready to go for this Sorry, let me show you my network manager file, but maybe I can uh, give the, the, the screen to, to Alex so Alex can uh, maybe uh, now show us uh, how we would go for uh, uh, for a recording, for a real recording. So we will be able to, to go online with real equipment. So Alex, you got, the, you got the screen. Okay, you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So just for a uh, fast, uh, simple demo of the record in M1 and live demo. Actually, I have um, some kind of simple uh, LF 
uh, left right system with uh, x for left and x for right. I have one silver sub, some um, parent group here. And this LA4x is driven by my bus left and right, and, uh, and I have a, a third bus for fields with P series fields, let's say. And I would like to measure the third, the three uh, sources, the, my fields, my subs, and my X4 left. So that's why I have assigned uh, these two locations to these three groups. Of course, I have uh, first uh, check also uh, my two microphone. I will use two microphone um, with the 48 volt on pre preamp gain here access. And normally I can go into tuning M1 and I have the record tab opening. So my three groups, I can select the all to have the same, uh, let's say the same sweep settings. Let's say I will try minus 46 dB and I can here have access to the routing of the generator. So AVB bus one for my left right system and analog output through the bus three for my P series. So that's okay for my uh, group sweep settings. I have here a warning message that no group on, so I can harm here. Of course, I cannot harm both location because it's the same mic use, so I have to use mic two on location two, for instance. Here I can uh, have access, direct access to the prime game if I want to use, and the preview mic. So I think I'm ready. I could, of course, select or unselect manually if I need some source I want to uh, measure or not. So I'm ready. So let's start record. So, as I know, uh, explained to you, uh, M1 is measuring all the matrix measurement uh, automatically by muting and unmuting each measurement group. And then once the, all the measurement, the sequence is complete, you can just by clicking on each measurement, you can directly visualize each measurement. So you have for each measurement, you have access to the magnitude of the sweep with the Y scale on the left side. And you have a fixed scale here uh, between 0 dB and 100 dB for the SNR level. And uh, to sum up the quality of the measurement, you have the quality bar here, who, which is green, so that means it's correct in the bandwidth of uh, my X4 here, for instance. And here you can easily uh, display or undisplay each measurement. You can select or unselect several sweep if you need, if you uh, judge that some sweeps are incorrect. But uh, the algorithm of the multi-sweep will uh, automatically discard uh, sweep with SNR too low or with uh, magnitude spread too high. 
but of course you can uh, choose if uh, you are not uh, agree with the the algorithm you can reselect some discard strips um, so of course here every measurement is correct even the sub green quality bar in the bandwidth so that means i can accept either i can accept each measurement individually by clicking here or i can directly accept every measurement right here you have access here to the date of the measurement. You can, by clicking here, you will uh, be able to check the magnitude of the sweep. And um, I think that's all for the record. Um, here, are the IP address of the P1, if you use a multi P1. And uh, of course, regarding, maybe you will have some question regarding the quality of measurement and or the um, how to to set a good sweep settings. So I invite you to um, to attend to the webinar uh, about quality measurement tomorrow. So I think uh, that's uh, that's OK for me. Maybe some question or can we continue? Yes, yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, well, uh, I guess it's clear for everyone now how you can uh, you can have this uh, a recording of of our uh, old measurements. So if we go back to our session now, uh, I left apart the the, the verification process, uh, erasing the groups and the measurements I did for that. I don't want to to uh, be uh, worried about that. So I got rid of it, and now I've got my measurements for uh, my tuning process. So I've got here a bunch of twelve measurements for the old venue. I can show you the place where they are. Uh, done so um, you need if you if you are interested in why we choose those kind of measurements and you can attend when we when we can go out again uh, you can attend the uh, um, uh, calibration training lsc loudspeaker system calibration uh, that will explain explain in detail why we do the measurement this way uh, but this is the, the the place i did the measurements for the cara uh, sb18 system the main system and uh, please, uh, uh, sorry, back one slide and keep in mind where the first one is. This will be uh, this will be important within the few minutes. Um, if I go back to my network manager, so you got these 12 measurements that are affected to SB18 right, Cara right, OK? Uh, and all of them are affected to the same same stuff. OK, and then I got my field system and I will come back to that in, a, in a, after after the main. Um, so measurement position is important and number of, of uh, location, number of, uh, of uh, uh, microphone position is, is important. Uh, if you only have one, then uh, you will be able to do uh, to do uh, not much. If you have uh, enough of them and I would say at minimum eight, then you can be you can be able to uh, to go further in your in your uh, tuning process. So let's go for uh, M1 and for the main system. So first of all, I would like to uh, to have a, a very quick, not definitive, but very quick uh, alignment of my Cara and my SB. So I can go to the FOH position just to do that very quickly go to apply to my Cara for this one. So it's already done. I prepared it and to my SB18. So you will see this. This will be the, the, the value we we end with. But let's start with some proposal from delay finder. Uh, so it's proposing a little less delay so I can link that go back to zero. So it evolves uh, at the same time. So it's proposing me 3.75 milliseconds on the Cara, uh, which seems to be a little low uh, if I refer to my preset guide. Uh, preset guide, did I say that? OK, so what the preset guide? Let me go to our website. It's a little bit slow with the teams running at the same time. I go to my product. I go to my softwares, network manager, and there you can find the preset guide. 
So if I open that, and you go, you've got you've got plenty of very precious information about all our presets, and at the end of it, you can find something called uh, pre-alignment delay. So sorry, it's in French, but the table is is clear after that. And I can go to my Cara plus SB18. Look at what I should do with Cara SB18 100 cardioid, and it says I should have same polarity on SB18 and CARA and 5.5 milliseconds on the CARA group. OK, so this is a, a great way to start with and to be sure that you're not going in a very wrong uh, delay time. So this is a little bit too low because, uh, because I have my subs uh, behind the CARA and the the pre-alignment delay is already 5.5, so I should find something between maybe uh, 6, 6 and 8, something something like that. So this is a little bit low, but I don't care for the moment. It's a, a, a basic alignment process. Um, then I will go for um, choosing my contour target, which is a very important concept. So here I can have a look at my, sorry, I will show you all this stuff. I can have a look at my Cara measurements. OK, and wow, I can see this one is not is not very coherent with the rest. Everything is nice except this one. And this one, yeah, it's the first one. If I go back to my uh, my venue and you see my first point is there and it's not really in the coverage of the Cara. So, my mistake during this measurement set, this one is not is not really relevant to uh, to tune the CARA uh, at this position. So I can go back to my network manager and I would remove this one and not consider it because it's not uh, in the in a good uh, position for my measurement. All the others are quite nice, so I can add them to the average and show my average of the CARA. OK, nice. I can remove all this stuff and I can apply the same stuff to the SB18. OK, here it is. And of course, I want to sum all this stuff to see how it behaves in a global way. OK, let's display the sum. So you see, it's not perfect because I choose data at only one position, but OK, I could go for something more just right now. Close your eyes. It's magic. We will see after how we go there. Um, what uh, we got there is uh, we need to find some nice target curve to uh, to start with. So I told you this is a convention center. I will display it. I will reduce that a little, maybe 2 dBs is OK. I will, I will uh, try to have it aligned on the minus 56. OK, so I, now I can see my target. And uh, this is a convention center, so I would choose uh, a contour, an amount of contour would, which would be maybe 9 or 10 dB maximum. What, what I, I want is maximum intelligibility, uh, so 9 dB seems to be, to be good. And what I want to keep is this 3 dB per octave slope. That's important for me. I think this is one of the way to, to have a, a nice choice of the contour. So if I, if I come here at my maximum, so it's around, uh, around 50, 55, so I would go for 100, 200, 400, and this is a 9 dB, OK? So here in my setting, I can change my pivot point and have it to, let's say, 500, OK? So I can see there that uh, from the start, I need to reduce my control. I, I, I need to get rid of this energy there, and I, I need to get back some energy in the eyes. Um, that would be my, my objectives for, uh, for the main system. So this is the way I do it, but uh, hey, Martin, maybe you, you, can, uh, you can tell us how you would, uh, you would decide to uh, to choose a target for for your main system in such a in such a system. Well, I mean, from 
for me personally, it's always a decision based on on uh, uh, three aspects. On the one hand, it's uh, about the room acoustics. So a lot of rooms uh, having a difficult room response in the area around 200 hertz. Um, and uh, this leads to the fact that sometimes it's OK to have the pivot point at 800 hertz, so sometimes you, you prefer to go lower. Uh, in terms uh, um, about the overall LF contour, it's question. It's definitely a question about the program material from my point of view. As you mentioned, it's a convention center, so we will not end up with uh, something like 15, 16 dB LF contour for sure. So it should be a system that sounds powerful, um, but not, uh, not that powerful that the people run into issues uh, uh, using microphones and uh, but it should be also be able to to have a powerful sound if tracks were uh, were played uh, in um, during video presentations or something like that. And the third important point from my from my point of view is always talk to the guys who are using the system. So it's a question what they are used to, what they expect from the system. Uh, especially if people are not used to the L acoustics approach and to the to the uh, system tuning of an L acoustic system, um, you need to talk to them and need to mention to them that they should be a little bit more progressive using the high pass filter in the in the microphone channels on their console, and, um, and you should also consider what they're expecting from the system. So they should be happy with it. Okay, cool. Thanks, Martin. Um, completely agree with your with your approach. Um, okay, so I've got my my target. So this is what I want to achieve. Uh, so now I can go for a, a, a finer alignment of all this stuff, and I can use my auto align uh, tab and have a look at the proposals at different positions. So what would be the proposals of auto align? Uh, in this position, is proposing me 14 milliseconds with inverted polarity. I would not do that clearly. Uh, it's not uh, what my preset guy is saying, is telling me, and it will not correspond to the whole audience. Uh, another proposal would be 6.5 6 with one here, so 5.5. This looks uh, pretty much uh, okay. And what would be at the back of the audience? Maybe 11 would be nice to see. Uh, my proposal would be 6.5. Okay, so uh, this will be around this value. So let's have a look. Let's go back to zero there. And to fine, uh, fine tune the, the delay, I would go back to my EQ page and to my submission. Uh, so I'm not sure I've got all the, yeah. I, I was missing one guy there to display correctly the summation. And what I can do here is look at my average summation and just try something else. Maybe six milliseconds is better. Well, six is better here, but it's worth there. So I would go back to my 6.5. I can, I can maybe zoom a little bit so I can see better what's happening. So six milliseconds would be yeah, it's starting to, to be less energy there, so I don't want that. So the 6.5 would be uh, quite a nice starting point. OK, so this is my choice there. There is no mistake going to 6 or to 7. I mean, this is a, a choice regarding this approach there or this frequency there. So I know a lot of you are interested with, with the phase, but the phase is not a concept that is so uh, relevant to choose. Uh, my uh, my summation here. All the information that are contained within the phase are also contained within my summation, and I can um, I can have a look, for example, at the FOH position, and I can zoom on that. Okay, and my phase here would be okay, but look at what's happening if I just put in 51 milliseconds. Well, I still have a quite good summation. My phase here is not very good, but still I could be uh, I could be uh, cheated with this nice phase here. Uh, but if I look to my impulse response, then I can see that I'm completely off time. Okay, 
which would not be the case with a 6.5. Go back. OK, my time is good. My summation is good. And these are the two informations I need. And the informations included within the phase is also included within the summation. OK, let's move back to it. Um, so I got my summation. Now I want to go for my for my AQ tab and uh, let's go back to the display. OK, let's have a closer look at what's happening there. I can change my smoothing and clearly one of the uh, good thing to to make multiple measurements is to have a good average and being able to to trust the third or sixth of octave uh, smoothing because if you only have one then you will not be able to to look at that it will not be relevant you will have to keep maybe at the octave and maybe you can do one EQ point and that's it you can trust only one measurement point it's not a good average and I, I, I guess Etienne is uh, Scott Etienne is doing uh, a, a lot about that tomorrow right yeah, it's going to be a really great presentation uh, about uh, many different topics, including uh, where to put your measurement mics to get the best representative average, how to deal with uh, the number of sweeps to get a good signal, how to deal with the amplitude. Um, if you're a measurement geek like all of us, please don't hesitate to join Etienne tomorrow at the same time. OK, cool. So I, I will not go into too much details about uh, about this. Um, so I want to accuse this this point. Let's go to the third of octave to have a basic a basic view. So uh, here, what I would do first is to correct uh, the sources itself. So SB18 and Cara separately, maybe if I need to. In this particular case, I don't really need to. But just for the for the example, I will try to find something to correct on the sources. So maybe I can say that this guy there is to be corrected on the SB8. SB18 on its own. So I can go to my SB18 group. Where is it? It's there. And I can correct this 53 Hertz and maybe go for that. OK, that's more uh, more for the example rather than uh, uh, real life. But then you can you can what you have to do is to listen in your venue. Is this 53 Hertz annoying to me or not? If it is, then you can correct it on the on the on the subs. And as I've been using a point on the on the subs, I will be willing to do the same thing on a Kara so I don't lose any EQ resources. And maybe I want to correct this guy on the on the Kara. Okay. Still it's a choice. You can do that. You can do something else. There is no no mistake. Uh, and I correct I can correct that. Okay. Good enough. But then I would have to go to my auto align again because I've been doing some EQ stuff within uh, the crossover region. Uh, so just to, to get quicker, I will not go to that, but I would have to. Now I can go to my group SB18 Cara to apply all the EQs I need to smoother my uh, frequency response. And you can see this EQ is already occupied by the Cara and the SB18. So what I need to uh, to get rid of is this guy, this guy, this energy there, maybe find some more energy there. So I prepared it to be quick, quicker. So this guy here, OK, this one here. OK, that's good enough. I want a global, globally less energy there. You see my, my uh, queue here is quite uh, wide. Um, and I need some more energy there. So in the eyes, I can I can smooth it a little more on the on the smoothing, and I can go for gaining a little more energy. And you see the FIR are also good tools for uh, balancing the energy in the eyes because it's acting without any resonant frequency. It's uh, acting like a plateau. Uh, so my last question would be this region. Would I go for uh, a little more energy in this point? You have to be very, uh, uh, very uh, attentive to this kind of uh, action. So I prepared an EQ there. It's 100, it's 1 dB, and it's a Q of 3. It's not a very big EQ. I, I would not go for more, and I would definitely listen twice to it. Uh, why would I listen twice to it? Because if I look to my, to my measurements of the Cara, 
this is a region where I don't have a very uh, a very uh, good coherence between all my uh, my curves. So uh, take it easy with those those kind of EQs in these regions when you're not getting a very good coherence between all your measurements. So okay, what you're so saying there, Arno, is in an area where each of your measurements have a lot of difference, so there's not much consistency across the room, you might want to be careful in EQ in that space. Yeah, exactly. And, and if in you, the, in the opposite, in this if you case, have, I would use a, a larger Q, uh, uh, a smaller amount of gain, and I, I would listen to it twice. Sure, and so your ears quickly walking around the venue, you can uh, measure with your ears the room very quickly versus with microphone, you only had 10 or 12 spots to, to, to choose if this was a good or bad choice, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Cool, thank you, Arna. Okay, so I think we're good for the, for the main system at this point. So we are completely uh, at our target for the, for the contour target. So now we can move to the to the SIVA. Uh, so I will display the SIVA. Remember Arno, while you're displaying the SIVA, maybe I can add something. Please keep in mind if you're using a large number of IIR filters, it will not make your system better. So as a rule of thumb, uh, is if you're using more than four or five IRR filters, and if you're losing a, using a lot of very narrow filters, it will not be beneficial for the end result, the 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 end result of your system. So this is something which is probably very important if you're tuning a system. Yes, you you're right, Martin, and and. Uh... The rule of thumb for that is, is uh, if you get one measurement, you only uh, allow yourself only to one EQ. Meaning, if you if you only have time for one measurement at FOH, maybe you can do a large EQ for your balance, tunnel balance globally. And if you want to have more EQs, then you need more measurements and and have a, a better average. Um, so if we go to the SIVA, if I can display all the SIVA curves here, I can display my Average of that, okay, so that's nice. And um, what I'm willing to do with the SIVA is to align that with the main, but hey, I will not use auto align to do that. Uh, I will not use auto align for two reasons. The first one is if I want to align uh, my SIVA with the CARA, then I need a measurement at this point. And you know what, I, I didn't do it. So I don't have the measurement at this point. My measurement point for the SIVA is 13, 14, etc., until 18. And it's all in the coverage region of the CARA, but it's not at this point. And I would need, uh, sorry, I would need uh, one right at this point. And why don't, don't, do, uh, uh, don't I have this measurement? It's because you don't need this measurement to align your SIVA and your CARA. Uh, the best way to align it is to use sun vision and to use uh, um, a simulation because uh, your uh, alignment between the CARA and the SIVA will be moving a lot while you are moving through the venue. And at this point, this will not be the same alignment as it is there and there and there. So the best way to have a representation of uh, what's happening in your old venue at the same time is to use sun vision. So let me use the data mode of sun vision to do that. So I will display my CARA, right? Okay. And my SIVA right here. Okay, so you see this is the region when, where I want to align those guys. If I go to my data mode, which is set up, I can show you in my settings. Sorry, at this time it's 6 dB, 5 milliseconds. So if I have more than 6 dB of difference between the two sources, I go blue, meaning I've got single source that can be uh, uh, heard, whether it's the, the SIVA in this region or the CARA in this region. And for the crossover region, what I want to achieve is exactly what's there. I want to have common sources mode, meaning that there is no time problem between uh, those two guys. Uh, why am I already yellow? It's because I don't need much data between those two guys because their, their time of arrival is almost the same at this point. 
Okay, I don't care of what's happening in terms of alignment there because it's only the SIVA that's important. And I don't care uh, about the alignment there because it's only the CARA that is important. Uh, if I put just so you can see that if on the CARA I put 10 milliseconds, then I'm going red in this region. If I put a delay on the SIVA and I'm putting even maybe five milliseconds would be enough, I'm getting red here. So I know that I will have to put almost no delay on uh, the system. And in uh, in the real calibration of this venue, uh, what we did is one milliseconds of delay on the SIVA. And why did, you sh did we choose that? We choose that because when I'm sitting in this area, uh, I want the SIVA to lower my sound image. I don't want my uh, my sound to come from the CARA. So I will delay the SIVA until uh, uh, until the image is going up and I move. I will move back a little bit so my sound image is going down and I can lower my sound image to the stage and not up in the air. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I clear with this one, but uh, if not, please ask questions. But that's an important stuff. You you will not be able to uh, perfectly align. You could you could have this measurement at this point and and double check with M1, but that's all you could do. Your best friend for this alignment for us is is uh, is Sun Vision. Okay. I think Arno, this really highlights your design um, and having such a good physical placement in. And I know we've said it over the last couple of days, and I think it's so important to remind people that you cannot fix a bad design in a system calibration or tuning. Yes, right? right. So if you had a poor choice of that fill, if 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 the architect told you you had to put the SIVA here and it was a terrible choice, there's no amount of delay that will fix that bad placement. Right. So what you're able to prove here in Sound Vision is the placement is ideal, that it requires both very little difference in delay and throughout the coverage there's very little difference in the arrival of the two sources so it's probably going to be really nice and coherent and at that point installing the sound vision time plus some critical listening on site to decide how you want the image to play is 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 going to be your best friend yeah that's exactly what it is sound vision will give you uh let's say the plus or minus three milliseconds and then on site you can you can play with that to uh, to define what you want to hear and and that's it um, so okay, so let's move to uh, to still we we need to have an EQ on the SIVA, and uh, what I want to do with my SIVA is I don't want the same contour as the main system because if I, if I have the same contour as the main, uh, I will get a lot of energy in this region and it will not be very uh, it, it will not be reacting very good. Uh, because in this region it will interfere between the main and the and the field. So what I'm willing to do with my SIVA there is maybe not having a 9 dB contour, but maybe something more like a 5 dB contour. Okay, in a, in a more uh, rock and roll system when we have maybe 15 dB of contour, I would reduce it more, but there it's only 9 dB of contour, so 5 would be would be enough. Uh, then I would go to my SIVA group and I prepared it already. So I've got this, this guy there. I want to lower it down uh, with a large Q so it gets to my objectives. And I've got some few EQ points there uh, that I could add to optimize my frequency response. Uh, then I've got this point. This point is, is uh, questionable. Should I boost this point, uh, should I leave it with this? Uh, there is there is no not big problem by boosting it, but maybe I don't want to put a, a big boost at two kilohertz. Um, at the end, on the in the venue for this real life calibration, we went for this setting. So we went for a small boost, but not, not too much, not to the perfect uh, linear trace. What we've heard was uh, the good setting was that. So you 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 could uh, you could uh, you could choose something different. And same as on on my Cara, should I boost this region? We ended with this kind of behavior. Okay. Uh, so that's what we decided. Okay. When I say decided, I mean it's a choice, and we decided that by listening to it, not only looking at our curves. 
Uh, good for me with the SIVA. What we can look at after that is how it's summing uh, in the average with my main system to see if in this area I've got something that is close to my uh, target contour. So I will display my Kara there. Okay. And sum it with my SIVA. Here it is, uh, missing. What am I missing? Uh, this is only my Kara. Okay. Here am I. Looking at the noctave smoothing, I'm talking about contour. I'm not talking about seeing uh, if there is a slight frequency that's annoying me. And I'm pretty good. Okay, I'm, I'm achieving my target contour quite quite well. So that's the way I would I would think about maybe having a, adding a dB or two maybe on the SIVA. Maybe I can move that with with a two dB. Okay, that would be too much energy, less contour. So let's go back to this zero dB. Okay, and uh, as far as we remember, we finished with a one dB more on the SIVA, which is good for the, the corresponding contour. Um, okay, so we are good for the for the infields. Now we have these front fields to uh, to align. And for these front fields, I got the same measurements points, locations, so here they are. I've got my 13, 14, 15 that are just at the first, almost at the first row, uh, center, right, and uh, right, right. And I've got a second row, uh, which is further in the in, in the audience. Okay, just so you, you, you understand what you're seeing on the curves. Sorry, uh, this one. Uh, so there I have the measurements to align that either with Sun Vision or in M1 uh, with the SIVA, because in this case, I don't want to align my front field with the Cara. Let me show you with the Sun Vision file. Out of delay mode. So my Cara is doing this, and my front field is doing this. So is there any uh, any uh, any interest for me to align the front field with the Cara? They are not living in the same world. So I will try to align the front field with the SIVA. And this is much more interesting. So if I do that on the on, on Sun Vision first to see what it's proposing me and just to convince you that this is a good way to do it, uh, I can show my SIVA left. Let's go the other side and go with my front fields and display only the third uh, left ones and go to my delay mode. Okay, so here it's not as good, or maybe I have no delay on the SIVA and I have no delay on the front fields. Um, oh, sorry, I have to quit my solo. Let me do that again. Okay, so you see I can I can have some some red. I can move to mapping mode to have a better view of that. And in my mapping one, you see that my front field and my SIVA is not aligned here. Of course, I have no delay. And I click, I can click on it and have a quick view of my uh, delta in milliseconds. And you can see there, it's, uh, can you see that you know, on the screen? Yeah, it's, it's displayed right, okay, cool. So, yeah, we can, yeah, we can see it. Yeah, my delta is from uh, 22 milliseconds, 23 milliseconds, up to uh, let's say 16 milliseconds. So this will be somewhere between between that, the, the final choice. I can have a look there, maybe try something like 19. Yeah, 19 is great. I've got some some red here, some red here, so right in the middle I'm I'm good with with 19. Okay, so let's uh, let's move back to my network manager file. I can, uh, by the way, I can add my SIVA, add my delay, and uh, I told you it was one milliseconds more. Forgot to put it before, it's not a big deal. 
And on my uh, 5XT, I can go to auto align and double check that with my me measurement position. So I would go to this one. So this one is first row center. So this is where I should find the maximum of delay between my front fill and my SIVA. So let's go to 5XT there. SIVA there. OK, and I can ask a proposal for from a toe line. And it gives me 19 milliseconds. And for the second one, it gives me 13 milliseconds. So that's completely coherent with my uh, my sun vision. OK, 19 should uh, seems to be uh, a nice spot. And as I have 7.5 on my SIVA, this would lead to some kind of 21 milliseconds. OK, at the end of the day, at the at the calibration, we finished with a 23 milliseconds. OK, so I will go for that, but that's still uh, uh, um, current with all we see there. OK, so maybe I can uh, I can uh, we can move on without going uh, to the AQ part of the 5XT. Scott, what do you think? I, I can go there, but maybe it's, it's the same thing as the as the SIVA. I would go for uh, EQing my 5XT uh, on the overall, seeing my summation with uh, with the SIVA SIVA low. No, it's and, really uh, great. It's, it's really great to see the, the workflow you have, especially um, the hybrid between the simulation environment, the on-site measurement, and of course the critical listening with your ears, because I, I think it's just a really forgotten aspect of of all three of these parts have a huge role to play in how we do a system calibration. Um, I, I want to just point out you did this, and I, I, I absolutely love this fact, and it's something that's really neat about M1 that takes a lot of people a lot of time to get used to. Um, but you're adding all these different things together and you never actually took a measurement of those things together. Um, and so you were showing what happens when I turn the mains on down in this fill zone and how the low end builds up. You didn't actually take a measurement of those at That's that right. exact setting. So this is all work you can do without having to have every last thought of measurement needed along the way. And you changed your delay, your gain, your EQ, your polarity and still we're able to see what happens when you add the low end of the Kara down in that fill zone. And it's a really powerful tool to start thinking of your calibration in an entirely different way now that we've evolved these two platforms together. So it's, I really like that. I like that idea of down in my SIVA zone, I can see the low behavior from the Kara and what happens when the low end of the Kara contributes to the energy down there, right? That's a really great se se segment. So yeah, um, right. really cool. I, I, I also appreciate your approach on, on alignment. Um, uh, I'm the same way. I, I might get a, a fill zone that's large, like your SIVA care overlap and, and sound vision model that, and then when I get on site, it's plus or minus, what, two, three, four, five milliseconds? Martin, I think it's about the same for you. Yeah. yeah. So what what I would like to highlight if we're talking about the, the near fill systems here is that, uh, as you mentioned, Scott, it's, it's really, really necessary to listen to it. And um, maybe I know you can show uh, the measurement uh, of the auto align page with the impulse responses, and then things might uh, get sometimes quite, quite clearer. Um, please keep in mind, not everything would what looks perfectly uh, right in, in, in the measurement, which it still does, is at the end of the day a good choice. If we're talking about uh, spatial effects, if we're talking about acoustical localization, especially if you're sitting in the first sitting row, you, you're interested to have a first wave sculpture or first wave from, from, from the stage area, um, you might play around with gain, with delay, and uh, it's about your personal decision, your experience um, to find a good solution to get the right acoustical orientation and not uh, um, not to compromise too much the tonality and the impulse behavior of the system. Cool. So at I think the end of the day, it's 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 listen to the system. I think we uh, Arno's got on screen here showing the the measurement. Is this the SIVA and one of the front fills? Is that what we're seeing, Arno? Yes. Looks like. Yeah. Yeah, what we can see is that the CVAR is earlier compared to, to the 5XT, which means that uh, the acoustical orientation will be dominated by the CVAR system. 
All right, so Arno, your mic is muted, just so you know. Um, so let's pick up number two. I think that's a hundred dollar fine if I check with Jesse. Two pickups a night, uh, hundred dollars. Um, yeah, that's about uh, right. Yeah, that's about <laughs> right. Um, uh, or, or it's a beer, just so you know. So everyone in Germany or France, where it's five five in the afternoon, uh, uh, Arno's buying you a beer. So that's good. Um, um, yeah. So Martin, that's great. In the impulse, what we can actually see is see that the um, the the SIVA is arriving early by I can't quite see on my screen unfortunately but it's a couple milliseconds and so your brain will actually localize the sound energy coming from the SIVA in that case um, because of that and and that's the way we can identify that from a, 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 a measurement is which way that's going to be but we would also perceive that really quickly on site by ear uh, if we just change two or three milliseconds the voice will change to the speaker that arrives first yes Arno, you're muted again. Oh, that's now two beers. He's got to buy two beers for everybody. Uh, yeah, that's right. You have to. Uh, you, that's part of the choice you have to make during the calibration, and that's your choice and the user choice. That's not nothing more. Uh, one last thing I, I would like to show you, Scott. Maybe I, I'm not sure. I, I don't. I'm not looking at the question from the chat, but I'm pretty sure there is questions about. Hey, what about remorphing tools? Why didn't do Arno used it during the calibration. Uh, I never use the uh, remorphing tools because it's for a fixed installation. I want the I want the user to be able to uh, to uh, to use it for uh, for his everyday job. You know, he's got a system and he will have different shows every day. Uh, and maybe one day it will be a pure con convention with only speech during eight hours, and he wants a very low control. And the day after, you will have a, a contempora con contemporary dance uh, dance show with uh, heavy electronic uh, stuff, and you will want a big, big, big contour. So here we started with a contour for for speech. And if I go back to my uh, to my let's say my Cara and my SB18, if I'm using this. Um, this uh, a remorphing tool for tuning my system, meaning that I will have a different setting on the Cara and on, on the SIVA, for example. Then I can't access it anymore on my uh, main group, on my old group. Here, doing that, I still have the, the ability to use it for my main group. And for example, if my new target is not uh, 9 dB, but maybe 15 dB, and as I told you, I try to keep uh, um, some kind of slope that is close to the 3 dB per octave. So this would lead to maybe uh, 630 or, or 800. Uh, then I don't want to uh, tune my system all again from scratch. I want just to have this quick LF contour stuff. I'm going from 9 to 15. So if I'm not wrong with my mass, it will go for a 6 dB. And here it is. It's done. It's only one click to achieve a new contour, which will be uh, uh, adapted for uh, electronic music and uh, much more uh, heavy material. So that's why I, I'm not using the the, the array morphing tool for for calibration for tuning purposes. It's actually a really great use of that. I've, I, I've... Uh, my background is much more on the touring or festival side, so I don't think of it in this way, but the ability for the operator, the end user, the owner of their system to to have access to that tool and quickly scale up or down um, that system. Um, uh, do you normally apply that just to the mains group or do you sometimes even do that to the all group or or would you want to uh, choose where that's applied? Uh, I, I would. Uh, uh, my concern is to be able to apply this to the all group for the user so it doesn't have to... Uh, uh, to um, to take care about anything, uh, meaning that if you do that on the old group, the the contour differential we set up on the on the SIVA compared to the car will remain the same. Uh, if you do that on the main, then your contour differential will uh, change between the car and the SIVA. So, uh, in my point of view, that's uh, a good choice to uh, to keep it uh, completely global. At this point, then if you want to go to a more precise calibration and redo the calibration again from scratch to uh, a new purpose and you know your objectives for tonight, then of course you, you might get better results doing all again. 
but for uh, quick access to uh, uh, modifying the system, uh, which is a drastic modification, uh, adding 6 dB of control is a drastic modification, but it can be done in one click. So that's a cool, uh, a cool functionality. I suppose uh, for fixed install, Martin, this also makes a lot of sense for venues that have traveling shows coming in. So if if this theater or performing arts center or a uh, different facility has a, 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 a pop music act on Tuesday and on Thursday is going to have a classical orchestra play, um, them having this ability to quickly switch tunings like this and follow the, the to match the need of the artist is probably a really nice way to do it. Well, it's a very interesting approach that uh, Arno is using. Um, beside this, I have to admit that I'm usually using array morphing on the mains group. So this is uh, the way the way I'm doing it. But there are different ways to roam, of course. Um, and um, the thing is, what I'm using when we are going back to the question you initially asked me about the LF contour is that I'm using Zoom Factor uh, definitely in the main system. Uh, to get more clearance in the uh, in the PA system if necessary, and this is uh, also one big part of uh, the commissioning that I'm doing and on fixed installation, that I'm doing a short little training to the sound engineers and tell them how they could handle the zoom factor if they lower it a little bit to get more clearance in the system and what they can do with the LF contour and uh, how they could choose between different uh, uh, um, types of LF contour due to the daily program material. But I mean, it's it's also an approach what, what Arno does that he puts everything on all, which makes it of course more easy for the sound engineer in, in the venue. Good, well, thank you, um, Martin. Thank you, Arno. Uh, Arno, I, I think this is near the end of your your presentation and I wanted to see if we had any questions from the audience. Oh, let's see if I can send that. Sorry guys. Uh, I think I think we had we had several times a question about the the uh, choice of the delay between the SBA team and the Kara where some people did not 100% follow you why you end up with 6.5 milliseconds as uh, initially you have measured uh, 3.75. So I think it would be cool to repeat this. Yeah, okay. So if I go back to, okay, I'm done with the, the display, so I can move with that. And um, the 3.5 milliseconds was uh, the proposal of, uh, of the FOH position. Okay, I have to choose my car again. B18. And if I go to my FOH position, then uh, my proposal will be uh, this. Can't remember exactly. It was a three point. Let's move that to zero. It was a three point ninety two. But this is only available for. Uh, uh, not available. Sorry. This is only suitable for the Kara stuff. If I go back to my measurement points, this one, you see my FOH is quite off axis of my alignment of CARA plus SB18. So of course the, the value of the delay will change slightly because I'm getting uh, 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 um, a pass difference, which is not the same as on axis. And if I'm going the other way, it will be the same as for the FOH. So uh, what I want to achieve there is having a global average value that is effective for all these venues, not only at FOH. And uh, maybe sometimes you will choose to tune that for the mixing engineer, so he got the, the punch he wants. But maybe that's not a good idea to give him uh, much more punch than the rest of the audience. So maybe it's better to have uh, a global average value for that. That's uh, once again, that's a choice. You can you can choose uh, something different, but uh, you have just you just have to know why you choose the the this value or another. So we go for let's say four milliseconds at the FOH position, with, which is uh, the extreme position, let's say. Uh, and if if we go back at uh, let's have a look at my measurement points. If we go back and look at what's happening at 
number 12, which is uh, more on axis and uh, at the back of the venue. This, the proposal would be, let's have a look. So it would be 694. So uh, I know that looking at all my positions, this is the, the, the good value, if there is a good value, will be between four and between seven. And that's, there is no bad choice between four and seven. There is only choices. Uh, if I go back to my average stuff and zoom in on my summation, then I can go to my Cara group. Sorry, I've got the sun in my screen and try different solution. And here I've got seven. OK, so you will see no difference between 694 and seven. If I go down to six, what's happening? I'm getting more energy in the subs and I'm already getting a little less energy in this region. And if I'm going to four, which was the, the value that uh, was perfect in the FOH position, on the overall average, I'm getting much less energy, in fact. That will be better only for the FOH position. And for the average summation, it will be much more efficient to have uh, six milliseconds or so. Let's try a five, maybe. Five is not as good in, in this region. So that's why I ended with a 6.5, which was a, a, a quite well balanced uh, choice between the subs and the impact, and uh, also a good average in all positions of the venue and not only for FH. That's really cool. Um, once again, to just remind everyone it's it's going to take everyone a while to get used to this new way of thinking and measurement and tuning and calibration but you're changing everything without having to take more measurements without having to listen to pink noise um, seeing the effect of what 11 different locations so this in a legacy format system measurement software you would have had to have 11 different measurement mics you would have had to have all of them making pink noise and be changing these values to see that response on average overall at the same time, right? So it's a hugely different workflow to get used to. Um, if if you guys were a part of the webinar yesterday, um, we talked a bit about what's our window for time alignments between different types of sources. In the low end, usually it's about plus or minus 2.5 milliseconds, right? So low end to like, so sub to Kara, we have a plus or minus 2.5 millisecond window to play in. Uh, Etienne is going to talk at much more length tomorrow about why that window exists. So within that window, as, as Arno said, it's all fine. It's now just preference of how do we get the best average versus how do we bias for one particular position versus not. Arno, I completely agree with you. I usually tend to bias a little bit away from mixed position because mix is often in the center of a left-right PA where they get really good coherence in the low end from left and right. So they usually get a, an extra 3 dB. So if it's slightly less efficient at mix, in mono, when you go to stereo, it, it tends to balance out a bit. So it's usually a, a choice that I bias towards as well. Um, I think I saw one other question here. I think uh, JC, um, let me see if we can find an answer for this question. I, I quite liked it as well. Um, JC, you had a question from uh, from everyone as well, right? Yes, uh, we got a lot of question about that. Um, uh, now we're gonna gonna ask directly to Arno. Maybe um, <clears throat> how did you manage all the uh, global LF uh, contour buildup, uh, making by the venue, making by the all the different uh, uh, subs uh, system? Can you tell us about this global uh, LF buildup, please? Uh, you, you mean you mean at the is the question uh, at the simulation point or uh, at the yeah. measurement point? Did, did you manage it at the simulation point or at the measurement or uh, at the end of the with the LF uh, LF tools? Okay, so when you when you go to the measurement point, then uh, what you measure is uh, is including the LF buildup, so you can you can actually see your measurements and and manage that with uh, with your real measurements. Uh, when you look at the uh, at the simulation part, so let me go back to to this. If you look at your car, I, I I told that at the beginning of the presentation. 
the choice I made at the end was something like uh, this kind of, of target, knowing that uh, going back to the venue with the effect of the of the back wall, I would get some more uh, energy of the of the of the build up of the low frequencies uh, because of the reflection of the back wall. Uh, so this choice here at the simulation, and this is uh, very important because this uh, influenced the the choice of auto splay for the inter element angles. And as I told you, this is Cara I, so this is not an option to uh, to go for changing these inter-element angles once on, on site because you realize that the back wall is giving uh, a lot of uh, a lot of energy. Uh, so this has to be, uh, of course, uh, taken into account by uh, saying that okay, this this curve here, the low frequency curve, will maybe uh, follow this kind of of trace rather than this one, but this will be only effective for uh, for maybe let's do a little bit into the 3D. Uh, this would be effective only for this region. OK, as soon as you go there, when you're five, six meters away from the back wall, then there is no not much buildup from from the venue. So uh, at this point, you can you can uh, you can think about that when you're uh, choosing your SPL target. Uh, reference. Is that uh, it, does it answer the the questions? Yes, I think uh, that uh, that is uh, quite good. But uh, the question was also by uh, how did you manage it uh, directly on the um, on the calibration uh, on site? Well, on site there is there is not much you can do about uh, the distribution of your energy. Uh, all over the all over the venue. I mean, if you didn't manage it on the simulation part on site, there is nothing you can do uh, except auto FIR again and choosing another objective with your auto FIR. So in, there is nothing you can do uh, regarding the distribution of your system through the the the, the depths of your audience. This has to be uh, uh, taken into account at the simulation points. And one, once you're on site for your calibration. All you can do is a global adjustment, and then you have to focus on your average and and say, okay, I didn't uh, I didn't take that into account at my simulation. Uh, too bad, but uh, the calibration will not solve the problem. Once again, this is not this is not the calibration that will solve a design problem. And I think too to follow up on that, maybe I'll try the question in a different way, JC. Um, one neat thing with M1 is we can start at each location and add all the different subsystems if you measured them, right? So down in front where Arno measured both the CARA and the SIVA, we can see the effect of having multiple systems on. Um, and uh, my experience tells me we, we don't have to worry too much about the addition of left and right in most places of the venue, but we probably do need to worry about the fill zones, how they add complementary low end from the main system. So I would probably consider measuring my SIVA uh, in SIVA low and also in that same position measuring my CARA and potentially SB18, potentially other things. And within M1, you can start to unmute or you can add those those measurements to the response at that particular location and see what the low end does down there. So you can see if you can keep a more consistent tonal response across the venue. So those are all the different scenarios, but Arno is 100% correct. Um, in the very beginning, if, if you make poor choices on your design, we're not going to solve that. Um, with with a calibration. If we put a bunch of KS28 on the ground right in front and the low end is too loud right in front, there's nothing the calibration is going to do to fix the fact that you're next to subwoofers. Um, I haven't seen too many Thanks other questions lot. come in that uh, the rest of the moderators haven't been able to answer. I, I do want to thank everyone for their time today. Um, it's it's been a really great presentation, Arno. I, I've actually learned a few things that I didn't know about the process of calibration and in different techniques and behaviors. So I really, really want to thank you for putting this together. For um, Martin, it's always great to see you. Um, uh, you've only missed one pickup, Martin. That's the free one, so you don't have to buy any beers yet. So far, um, we'll give you one last chance to buy everyone around to drinks, Martin. Oh, he made it. Oh, perfect. So, uh, we were hoping, all of us were hoping for a beer, Martin. So thank you for joining us today. The next Martin. time when we're doing the Beer Fest in Marcosi, I will bring. <laughs> Good. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Arno, um, I think you also only missed one pickup, um, or was it two? I can't remember. 
Um, so uh, uh, everyone, just send your uh, send your tab into uh, Arno, care of uh, just south of Lyon, um, in his flowery shirt. Um, uh, I think you're supposed to be on holiday soon. It looks like that's that's what I'm taking. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> that's that's my uh, walking suit. Oh, good. Good, uh, Alex. It's been great to see you. Um, I, I, I still wonder what your neighbors think you're doing on a daily basis. Um, I can only imagine your flat uh, above you and below you is quite confused. <laughs> I try. I try not to to meet my neighborhood actually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin, I, I really appreciate Belgium beer, please. Okay, I will do my best. <laughs> Thanks, uh, JC. Uh, I hope all is well. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for helping to moderate. Um, guys, uh, I hope JC and Jesse and Sergey were helping to answer your questions if you have any. Um, thank you, JC, for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and I hope yeah we have a response to a lot of questions you get. Um, yeah, but I think it was a good um, good session also. And uh, Martin, yes, uh, here in Alsace, we definitely love uh, German beer. Oh. <laughs> Jesse, oh, uh, I can't wait to see what beer you're going to bring. Um, you did miss a pickup, so um... I did. I, I was a little late on a pickup. It was before the broadcast, I think. However, I will I will happily uh, pay my penance in all the good uh, Colorado beer that I have here. So let's let's do the beer fest and have a throwdown. And Sergey, I believe you didn't miss a pickup, so there's no vodka coming. Sorry, sorry, everybody. So. Um... No vodka coming, but that might be the solution for the whole world now, what we are all looking for. A bunch of vodka and beer? Okay. Yeah. Well, excellent, everyone. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, tomorrow we have another presentation on um, Etienne Cortel, Director of Scientific Outreach and Education, is going to be presenting all about where to measure, how many measurements, how to measure, where to acquire good data. This is a really good, uh, geeky presentation. I enjoyed a lot. Um, thank you guys very much for coming. Arno, great job as always. Uh, take care, everyone. We'll see you soon.